Welcome back to my channel, y'all. It is me, Curly K Glam, and I'm here today to bring y'all this grownish season one. I mean, not season one, season three, episode one review. Y'all like my shirt? This is an ode to all the 90s and 2000s kids, early 2000s kids. Nah, just the nice kids who grew up on the 2000s cartoons. Got the Johnny Bravo, got the Ed, Ed and Eddie, got the Dexter's Laboratory. Got this from your local Ross, y'all. Y'all better start sleeping on Ross because Ross has all the, like, if you into the nostalgia stuff, I like I am, like, Disney characters, cartoon char Cartoon Network characters, Disney characters. I say Disney. Nickelodeon characters, everything. But anyway, let's get back to what we have at hand. I didn't even take no notes because honestly, I'm just gonna keep y'all the way funky with y'all. I was all over the place with this episode. I'm not mad at nothing that happened in the episode. I do have quite a few opinions on what occurred in the episode, but I'm not mad at what occurred in the episode. I'm mad at grownish, grownish, okay? Grownish people. Why did y'all try to pack all of that into 20 minutes? That is ridiculous. Y'all could at least grace our um, TV screen slash computer screens if you watch it on Hulu. You could have graced us with at least two episodes beginning of season three if y'all was going to try to pack all of this into that one episode in 20 minutes. And then y'all had a nerd to have 10 minutes worth of commercials. Like, seriously. Even I watched it on Hulu where there is no commercials. But the point of the matter is we're just going to start off with Zoe coming back from the airport. Of course, as you know, we ended season two with her going to London, taking the um, internship at the flagship store. She is now bossed up. She has now been on her Sierra flow. She has leveled up and she is coming back to Cal U for her junior year. Um, let's see. She started off, like I said, at the flagship store with Joey and now she is now his personal stylist. So... She has got her job. She is employed. She says she's back in the good graces of her father, Andre Johnson. And everything is good. She said nothing can be better. She's cleared her mind. She had three months to get herself together because when she left, she was in an emotional bag. She was in her emotional bag. She was all in the feelings. Okay. So she's coming out saying that she's going to keep away from Luca and from Aaron. Those are distractions. And she's come to reclaim herself but we all know that that's not how that's gonna go and so of course we get to the house all of them are now living in the house together plus Vivek I love Vivek I have a soft place in my heart for Vivek and Vivek has been homeless the last two seasons of Grownish he's been living on the couch at Hawkins so I'm finally glad he got a bed to claim as his own go Vivek but um the girls are meeting her in the yard. Of course, my faves, Sky and Jazz. I live for Sky because her mouth is so sharp and witty. She always has a comeback. She always has something to say. Okay, so we're met with Jazz, Sky, and Anna. They're, you know, welcoming Zoe home. They threw this whole old to um Beachella. So everybody's dressed as Beachella. I've been reading on Twitter that, that those were Beyonce's actual steppers and um majorette dancers. I don't know why anybody was surprised by any of this because obviously Chloe and Halle are work for Parkwood and Beyonce is their manager slash boss. And so can you not expect the plug now, if all of them would have walked into season three with the new Ivy Park Adidas line on, I wouldn't have been surprised. And if you see it throughout the course of season three, still won't be surprised because they've been known to um, give Ivy Park and anything pertaining to Beyonce and the Parkwood full free promotion on Grownish because they are signed to Parkwood. So um, for all the people out there who are saying how they're going to have this HBCU theme, uh, at a PWI, Beyonce had HBCU theme at Coachella, and she ain't never been in nobody's HBCU or college, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, because everybody was kind of in their feelings and saying they was cringy about it. But, um, so basically, she gets to the party. 
She's talking about her time and how she's focusing on her. She's met with Anna. So they go in the house. She changed her outfit. She come back out. She telling before they, she interrupts the strut to tell Anna that she kissed Aaron, which I thought was trash because I'm like, I'm over both of y'all and Aaron at this point. Like, honestly, I'm over both of y'all and Aaron. Aaron is trash. I'm not team Aaron. Love him. Not team Aaron. Um, Kind of sad for Anna because I know that kind of took a, her, a hit to her ego, even though she tried to make it seem like she was totally over him. I don't think that's how that works. But I'm just going to roll with it for the sake of the TV show because that's what they wanted us to think. So, okay, she's over Aaron. She's cool with it. So they go back to the strut. Aaron's there. So all of them push her to talk to Aaron. So she goes to talk to Aaron. We're not going to even talk about Aaron indulging said substance because that was just completely stupid. Um, <laughs> so at this point, Aaron is under the, under the influence and he's talking to Zoe and, um, basically Zoe's like, it's cool that we can be cool. Wrong time. Absolute wrong time to have a conversation. She didn't know, but you know, he was starting to feel the effects of what he partook in. So, you know, they're having back and forth, back and forth. Aaron was just like, yeah, basically, you know. The kiss meant nothing, but, you know, if you want to, you know, hang out sometime for the children. If you want to, you know, get up sometime and, you know, uh, <laughs> she was like, no, I'm good. And so, that's where that she's getting back to her friend. She's having fun at the party, okay? So, Joey is texting her at this point because he needs to be styled. He has, an, he has a booking and he needs to be styled. So, Zoe is not answering that. Um, Luca shows up. Did y'all see that Luca had a pager on his hip? So how Luca go for two seasons having a whole phone to having a pager on his hip? Luca looked like he drove the Scooby-Doo van in the outfit. I don't know. Anyway, so Luca shows up. And everybody, I'm Team Luca. I don't care what y'all say. I got a soft place in my heart for Luca. Luca is very, very different. Some of like, you know, he cares for Zoe, but I think, uh, like, a lot of the times, the things that he say, it comes off very egotistical and trash, but so does Zoe. So, I can't really, you know, be mad at the things Lucas say because Zoe makes a lot of things all about her as well. I know, like, there was a lot of, like, Luca bashing on... <laughs> there was a lot of Luca bashing on my timeline, and I'm like... Luca and Zoe are basically like the same person. So anything that Luca says to Zoe, I cannot be mad at. Plus, they're young and they're in college. You say stupid stuff. You think stupid stuff. Like, you're still maturing at this point. So, Z the Luca comes up to Zoe and gives her this very subpar apology. <laughs> this very subpar apology. And she, you know, is listening. And she's just like, you know, I don't think that's really an apology. And so, uh, Luca's still talking in. She gets stuck on the fact that he says that I chased you to the airport, which she didn't know. But had she answered her six minutes call, she would have known that Luca was at the airport. Um, yeah, so Luca tells her that she's stuck on that fact. So she just stuck at this point. So Luca says whatever. He walks off. And so um, Zoe goes and tells the girls that, you know, Luca said that he chased her to the airport. So now she just stuck because now she done said all this stuff. She done talked all this junk. And that girl still is in love with Luca. She just went to England and ignored everything she felt. And yeah, she might have focused on herself. But when you have a situation, running from the situation doesn't do anything but prolong the fact that you're going to have to deal with the situation when you get settled. So... She's now stuck. Joey's still blowing up her phone. She's on the verge of... People were saying she was getting fired because I definitely was watching the tweets um, while the show was on because I couldn't watch it the next day because they didn't come on Hulu to the next day, which is today. But I was definitely watching because I needed to know the tea. I needed to know, like, what did I... Because I was so excited. I needed to know what I was going to be in for. I couldn't wait. So... She, at this point, so she's, like, trying to run to Joey. So, she asked with Vic, is Luca still there? He said, Luca just left. So, she's supposed to be trying to look for Luca, but she ends up going to find Joey. Okay, so she's in the studio with Joey, trying to find him something to wear for his booking at the radio station. And all of a sudden, like, she can't get it together. And Joey's like, girl, what is wrong with you? Get it together. See, it's like, 
pick me out some clothes. Like, I don't care what you got going on. Just, you know, fix it. So then, all together, all in all, Joey ends up telling Zoe to stop second-guessing yourself. You know what it is what you want. You know what it is that you have to do. So just do it. Stop putting yourself through the motion. Stop putting yourself under all this unnecessary stress and pressure when, indeed, you know what you need to do. And so, um, of course, you know, Joey knows who Luca is because Zoe has talked to Joey about giving Luca the job. So, and he's like, don't let your distractions make you lose your job. Like, do you not like being employed? You're working for Joey. At this point, you're winning. Um, so she picks out his clothes, blah, blah, blah. She goes back. We have this whole thing about the turtleneck and the cashmere sweater. Like, Joey, you should have listened. She told you it's going to burn up. You ended up, like, almost passing out at the radio interview. But that's neither here nor there. But anyway, so she leaves the studio, goes back to the house, talks to the girls about it. Well, she sees Anna. And so Anna asks her, um, Anna asks her, about her time and did she find Luca? She's like, no. She's like, I'm not worried about Luca, which we all know that is a lie. And let me tell you something. I am an investigator when it comes down to Gronish because I am that like into the plot line. I don't look okay, we're gonna get into that. So anyway, she tells her she's not worried about Luca. So they go back to the party. And at this point, this is the infamous swag surf scene, the swag surf scene that everybody was talking about. And so they're swag, they're surfing. Next thing you know, Nomi pulls up in the car. She gets out, she's walking. And then she got on this little bitty, this little bitty button up. <laughs> this little bitty button up. Looking like she belong on the, the shores of Honolulu and Rocket Power with the outfit on. She rolls up and is like got a whole belly, like Ain't no baby bump. That's a whole bump. It's a whole fetus inside of Nomi's belly at this point. So, everybody is like shook. And then that's where the episode ends. So, then they put out this... Tra you know, I hate Gromish because they put out these 30-second trailers. And they try to, like, give you one drop of tea without giving you too much for you to, you know, they give you enough to wipe your napkin up with, but they don't give you enough to like stain your clothes for your tea to fall in your lap. They try to give you that little bit of tea to, to kind of, you, you know, you spill a little bit on the table after you missed your cup and you take your napkin and wipe it up. They don't want you to have to get the whole napkin and try to, you know, adapt your pants so the stain don't sit in your pants. They don't want to get that much tea. So we sitting here trying to figure out who the baby daddy is all right so this is where the conspiracy theories come in okay because i saw a lot of people saying how because nomi is by how because she was with the professor so i'm thinking address the situation with Paige. they skip all past page and and she she the baby mama okay so here's my theory i don't know if y'all remember back in season two when um, there was a poster board and they were looking at selling their eggs. And so, um, Zoe was like, absolutely not. I can't remember if Nomi was there when they had that discussion. But then if you fast forward to, um, the ending of season two, I can't remember what episode it was, but Nomi kept getting a phone call about an internship. Now, I don't know if that was the school. I know for, for a fact, the school did call her phone one time to question her about her relationship with the professor. But all them other times that Nomi left the room to talk about her internship, or she kept saying numbers, kept calling her, I think Nomi signed up to be a surrogate because, you know, she was all into the whole feminism thing, and she was into the whole it's my body, you can't tell me what to do thing. So, and plus, you know, I don't know if her parents might have cut her off because she came out to them. So I'm thinking Nomi was um during that time signing up to be a surrogate so she could get some money i don't or i think that she got pregnant to throw off the fact that she was messing with Paige. i don't know how grown she's gonna tie this whole story in but my theory is that she is a surrogate and that she was not in a relationship with the man 
Now, if she come up in a relationship with men, that's a whole nother ballgame because that's a whole nother bag to unpack that I hope grownish don't spend like five seconds talking about. But that's just that. Um, the fact that she's five months and they showed us this whole pregnancy test, like like people were saying, summer vacation is only three months. So I don't know how they went from three. Because at three, you don't really got a belly like that. She got like a whole bump. And so next episode they're supposed to be addressing it and i also think um if you look at the um if you go on google and type in season three of grownish they have the first three episodes outlined like the summary of the so of course crunch time which is what we're talking about is junior year the gang throws hbcu theme homecoming kickback party to kick off the semester zoe returns from her summer abroad and realizes that she quickly has to confirm her feelings for aaron and luca okay so bam we got that so next season the next episode is going to be called Dang, but the other word, cuss word. Um, it says the, tr the crew tries their best to cope with the shock and surprise, which is Nomi being pregnant, but another unexpected bomb sends Zoe into a spiral. So what happens to send Zoe into a spiral? Then if you read the description for episode three, it says Nomi challenges Zoe to be friends with Luca after their breakup, Zoe is forced to consider if she's if it's possible to be friends with an ex. Jazz and Doug help Lavette navigate the world of dating apps. We don't care about that part. It's not important. The point is, if you look at the trailer for the next episode, Nomi and Zoe are sitting down. And Nomi was like to Zoe, I'm never telling you. Like, this is why I never come to you and say anything. So my thing is... Did this, and this goes into my whole surrogacy theory. If Nomi is becoming a surrogate, is that the reason why Zoe said, I don't think this is a good idea, like what made you do this? Or is she pregnant with the child and giving the child up for adoption or leaving school? And is Zoe trying to talk her out of it and saying that's not a good idea? I just wonder. Um, number two. We know that Zoe and Aaron are going to have to readdress what happened when Aaron is in a sober mind. So, um, I wonder what's going to happen next. I, I did not disregard the fact that Sky had a boo. I'm not forgetting that. I'm just not addressing it because, obviously, I don't care about that new little boy. Sky is entertaining. Like, talking about somebody take you out for $40. And Sky was like, no, 60 Like, I was really hoping that they would kind of make Sky and Junior be a thing, but I see that they're going to push the envelope for somebody else, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But back to my theory with 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 Zoe. I thought that this season they was going to try to make Zoe and Joey be booze, but I'm not here for that, so hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully she's just an employee for him, and that's just it. But um, I think that, you know, the whole thing with Aaron is just done for. Um, it's unrealistic to go to college and not, you know, be entangled with stuff that happens. So I think that she is going to get back with Luca. Or I think her and Luca are going to have some kind of entanglements in the next couple of episodes where they're going back and forth on where they want to be together. But I don't think that whole being friends thing is going to work. Just because of the way that it ended with, between them two. And I feel like they still both have a lot of love for each other. So I feel like they're going to be, there's going to be a lot of back and forth between them. Um, about the, about the, um, I saw a lot of people talk about the whole HBCU thing and then being at a PWI. And so, what I, in the house, I don't know, like, okay, how can I say it? Because I was talking to my husband about this last night. And it's, you know, when you are in college, I can relate to this show so much with her being at a PWI because that legit was, like, my life, like, legit. So I've been out of school, you know, five years, what, coming up on five years. And so it's been a transition. So what, what Zoe is saying about growing up and, you know, setting yourself up for adulthood is correct because, like, once you graduate school, it takes, like, legit five years to set yourself up to become an adult. And I graduated at 23, and I just turned 28, and I'm still 
trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to get my wings to fly because it takes time. You, you, how you think your mama and daddy got to where they are now without having to grow and develop and mature, especially after graduating from school? So that's what I was saying about the whole HBCU thing. My husband, I already told y'all in the last couple of videos, my husband went to HBCU and I, I attended a PWI. When he would come to my school to visit me, he would just be so enamored with some of the things that my school had that his didn't. Again, this is not downplaying HBCUs. But when you go to HBCU, I mean, when you go to a PWI as a black person, Hawkins Hall, it's legit like Hawkins Hall. I know Hawkins Hall might be a, a dramatic version of college and of dormitory, but legit, the black community at a PWI, well, from my experience, I'm going to speak from my experience, was just like Hawkins Hall, where all the black people congregate, all the black people at the school know each other, all the black people at school is in each other business. It's just like a mini, it's just like a mini HBCU at a PWI. So it's like a microcosm inside of this big old macrocosm. And so when you go to parties and it's a white school and you and you black and you go to parties and you're black, not going to mixed parties, but if you're a black going to a black party, your black party is Okay, I know the whole homecoming thing was was dram dramatic because they had a, a theme party and it was supposed to be Beachella, but they play swag surf. Like, what do people think happens at black parties when you go to a PWI? We not listen to Party USA. We we listen to swag surf. We swag surfing like, and like people was like, um, the house they live in, they but they must be privileged or something like that. And I'm just like. You don't have to be privileged. Like, if you go to school and you go to a PWI and you work hard and you don't want to live on campus, you find your own house in an area near school and you get you some friends, some people you can trust, you get some roommates, some people who you know going to pay, and then y'all all split the cost. It's about five, six, seven, eight of them in the house. Yeah, they can't afford it. Scott and Jazz is on scholarship. They house going to be paid for. They don't get a stipend. Vivek is, you know what he do. He got money. Zoe working for Joey. Anna always got bread because she worked at, for her family business. Like, that's what happens. And, like, legit, like, when I went to school, I have never had no bad, like, living situation. I lived in nice apartments. I mean, it's at a PWI. Like, a PWI, like my, my boyfriend was even saying, like, you know how they had the steppers there because they're supposed to be representing the frats and all that stuff. Like, he was saying how at his school, all they had was all the black frats had was plots. When I went to my PWI, the black people, the black frats and sororities had frat and sorority houses, just like the white people. They weren't as big as the white sororities in the, in the white frats, but they had, they had it. So I was just like, I saw a lot of people saying it was cringy. Like they have Kappas, they have Alphas, they have AKAs, Deltas, they have all that. And then you got a black, a whole black community and most of the athletes are black and they come to parties then you got the regular black students so it's always a mix it's always something going on now was their party dramatized absolutely but does it happen over the course like that absolutely absolutely i've been to a lot of black parties and we listening to all kind of throwback like your hottest when I was in school, Future and 2 Chains and all them was getting big. So, like, all of Atlanta was getting big. We had the Migos. We had all of that going on. So, I'm just like, what do people think that the black people listen to at the PWI? It's not like we in, we in there, like, like I said, listening to Party USA and listening to Taylor Swift. Because that's not, I mean, you got something to do, but that's not what's not going to be playing at a party. Like, I'm just, like, cringy. Like, I'm need for... Some black people who go to they don't go to PWIs to get them a black friend that goes to a PWI and let them take you around school and spend a weekend with them and let them see how the black community is because I saw a lot of people who are just not knowledgeable and I had a lot of friends who went to HBCUs so did I go visit HBCUs with them yes was it a completely different experience absolutely but the black people at the, PW, at the PWI still do the same thing so I don't know why a lot of people found that weird I don't know why a lot of people find that house lavish. Like, I didn't find it lavish because I went to PWI and most of the people who went to PWIs had money and 
or they were on some type of scholarship. They had some type of stipend, they, and they were able to live like that. So I didn't see nothing unusual about it. But apparently, a lot of people found it weird, unusual, and cringy. Um, what I want for Zoe? Do I want Zoe to find herself? Absolutely. But we also have to realize that this is a show, first of all. Number two... Zoe is young. She's in college. And I don't know if people just forgot like what they did in college. But what Zoe is doing is absolutely normal. Besides them, you know, they in California. They, they laws and regulations is different from the south, the southern part of the United States. But um, they out there living and trying to find yourself, trying to trust your friends, trying to keep a close network of, network of people that you love, trying to stay on top of your schoolwork, trying to make sure you set yourself up for your next step in life. All that is very real and very natural. And it happens. Am I here for Zuka? Absolutely. If Zuka don't work, am I going to be a little upset? Probably, but, you know, she got to figure it out. And so does Luca. I feel like they'll figure it out. I just want to know what's this other piece of tea that's going to throw Zoe into a spiral. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people was also waiting for Ryan Destiny. She'll probably show them in episode two or three. I wonder who they're going to, because she's supposed to play HBCU student at Cal U to, for film and something. So I want to see who she's going to get entangled with. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that it's going to be Aaron. And I'm just hoping that that's not the case. <laughs> I just don't see it for Aaron. Sorry, y'all. I don't. Aaron, love him. Don't see it for him, though. But yeah, y'all. Let me know what y'all think about episode one of this season. Drop your comments down below. Who you think Know Me Baby Father is? Do you think this is a setup? Do you think we're all being manipulated, bamboozled, hoodwinked, and led astray? <laughs> Leave your comments down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Curly K Glam, and I will be back next week with the review for episode two. Deuces. <laughs>